No slouch. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I fought him uh, a really, really long time ago at Rewired 2016, I think. Um, really solid Shadow Mewtwo. And Shadow Mewtwo has recently been buffed. The character yeah. is a lot stronger <laughs> now. Those were like they were kind of, sort of small buffs, but they meant a lot to him. Now he is using the Frogadier EV support set. I think this is pretty smart, getting that attack buff. The attack buff plus the HP up, and just like that, showing that that move, like. Uh, Psywave now has priority over a lot of things, even Hyper Beam. All right, he has got a little bit of chip off. On to Nico here using some Miracle Eye to try and get some shenanigans Ooh, as well. That was an excellent reaction using Low Stance. That is <laughs> something that I think a lot of Shadow Mewtwo and Mewtwo players forget that they can do. Is Low Stance. <laughs> is be able to Low Stance a lot of moves. Just like a lot of Machamps forget that they can High Stance a lot of moves as well. All right, we are seeing a oh. combo coming out here from Nico. Does he get the kill? Not yet. Wall Splat. He will get one HP, and if he stays on him, he cannot call the Eevee. <laughs> that was really solid of him. He is in the air now. Tries to get the attack on. Is going to get the, the attack ground. buff. He does have to activate burst because otherwise he will lose a trade to any projectile Pikachu. Throws. Now he does have Rage plus the attack buff. Burst is slowly starting to run out though. Nico just waiting it out. Yeah, pretty smart from him as well. Taking I the hit because he recognized the shield break was coming, but now he's going to retaliate with burst of his own. Yeah, and Burst comes really, really quickly for Pikachu, which is pretty cool to see. Wow. Oh, nice job in the Vortex. getting the wall splat, able to hit him with the Vortex. That was beautiful job from t -Hulk. I think Nico is a little bit intimidated just because Shadow Mewtwo's damage is so high no matter what condition he's in, and Earthquake just being plus on block. And it just goes to show, even if a Shadow Mewtwo is at 1 HP, don't ever count them out. Don't ever sleep on a Shadow Mewtwo. Exactly. If anything, to me, Shadow Mewtwo always starts around 1 HP. Like, because yeah. <laughs> that's how you want to play. Like, you just don't want to get hit. Nice Earthquake. He is going to get hit by the counter. Oh, just barely drops it. Teleporting away. Teleport also a lot faster now. Yeah, really solid option for mix-ups as well. Huge buff. All right, we are seeing the burst coming out from T-Log. Tries to go for the Earthquake. Going for Earthquake instead of Flamethrower. Pushes it's going to be plus, getting a lot of chip. Trying that was to intimidate clever. him. But we just saw a cancel coming out from him. Wow, he's still in burst. He's hanging on, and that is going to confirm. Burst armor going to minimize the damage, but the huge part is it's going to waste Nico's burst. Absolutely, and he's going to be uh, pretty low on that synergy as well. Big damage coming out from T-Lok. Almost ha like that was pretty much half his health. Now I think Nico's around a quarter or so. Wow, that missed. He just went right through him. Nice counterattack coming out from T-Lok. T-Lok in a huge position right now. He can actually afford to take a little bit of a risk right now and try and do something like Vortex. Trying to low stand some of those attacks as well. Jirachi buff going to be activated for Nico, trying to get himself a little bit more synergy back. Miracle wow. Eye coming out. Just missing too. Nico right now just chipping him down. Ooh, nice that little counter. That is going to confirm. And that, wow, the shift is keeping him alive. And he has burst again. 78 HP. He's going to gain a little bit more back here. But Go the homing straight for takes it. it. Wow, rage. Nico playing a little bit respectful. But I think towards the end of that round, he started to adapt and said, mm -hmm. you know what? Like, a little more aggressive. He's pressing a lot of buttons. I just need to stop letting him do this. <laughs> and... I mean, it, it's okay. Like, I think it's very good quality and player to be able to change your play style like that. On Recognizing the fly. it, yep. Uh, yeah, and that's really hard. That's how you can separate a lot of the top players from non-top players is adaptation mid-set. Adaptation and just being able to not just adapt, but be able to condition your opponent by playing, say, like overly aggro one round, yeah, and, and then, then next round just playing incredibly campy and passive, because now they're going to keep getting stuffed out by projectiles because now they want to try and be aggressive back. Right, and you're just waiting patiently. We are seeing a lot wow, coming out from Nico. Based Iron Tail. He took that game pretty decisively. T Lock kind of had a hard time even moving during that last round there. So we are seeing that Nico takes game one. Nico also smiling a little bit, saying, Man, I was scared at first, but <laughs> that and, felt good. And, and you know what? He is uh, an out of the country player. And you know what? So he doesn't, he may not know all of these players, you know. And getting that first kind of initial fight, feeling the, your opponent out is really clever. All these players, all these different play styles, and it's also just intimidating because sometimes you're viewed as, like, the invader. Yeah. And so it, it does put a lot of pressure on you to perform well and then represent your country as well. It's representing your country. It's also, even if you're an outside player, usually um, majority of people want you to you know, do well. Like, they exactly. want to see you play. Like, yeah. I know a lot of NA players who are very excited that Nico is here. 
Yeah, and you can't blame them. It's great to see more people coming out to these uh, to these events, especially out of the country. And right now, both players making trades, but Nico in a huge position. But one of the other things is versus Shadow Mewtwo, when he's in rage, you kind of want to slow down because if you rush too much, he can easily punish you. Just get a random vortex or something that will take away your health. Yeah, and we're seeing that already. I mean, a lot of patience coming out from Nico. Wow. Nice job countering through that earthquake. He does get a little bit more poke. 13 HP left for T-Lok. Down to one. <laughs> T-Lok in a very bad position because Pikachu has lows and high tools that can just keep him out. I liked what Nico did just there. Right at the end of the round, he popped Rachi bu uh, buff to get himself a little bit more synergy. You can already see he's above 75% in this next round. Nico could have actually closed out that round after he confirmed the 5X because he could have did 5X into 5A. And I think he purposely dropped it so that he could call Jirachi to guarantee that he could burst twice this round if need be. Yeah, and you can already see the Jirachi buff is starting to come back. Uh, and that's going to be pretty instrumental in getting himself a second burst. Right now, he's, uh, he's just bursting. He, that's going to be it. Oh my Nico gosh. Just, see, Nico acknowledged that Tilo does not have burst and just popped burst of his own to keep up the pressure. And that was a solid 2-0 from a, Nico. That was, I feel like that 2-0 was less than one round's worth of time. Yeah. <laughs> that was like an 80-second 2-0. Tilo even, like, looking just happy that he played. Like, he had fun doing it, but also, like, wow, that was so fast. Like, exactly. and when you saw the adaptation, he had a huge lead, like, the first two rounds almost, and then Nico just brought it back. We saw a lot of punishes coming out from Nico as well. 